All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Megan. I'm the chair of the Atlantic Caring Management Board, and we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, since this is our first meeting of the day, I just wanted to reintroduce Doug Grout, who is the new governor's appointee for New Hampshire. He is replacing Richie White, who has retired. So uh, a welcome to Doug Grout, but also a congratulations to Richie on all of his efforts over the years. Um, all right. Well, our, our next order of business is approval of the agenda. We do have one update um, under other business related to funding for the Portside Sampling Program. Are there any other additions or modifications to the agenda? Seeing none, the agenda is approved by consent. We'll move on to approval of proceedings from August 2022. Are there any edits to the proceedings from August 2022? Uh, seeing none, the proceedings are approved by consent. All right, so as Tony mentioned, we are having some technical uh, difficulties with the audio on the webinar. So I'll see if there's any public commenters in the room in person. And I'm not seeing any, so we will come back to the public comment for hearing at a later portion of the meeting when we have that sorted out. So I thank you for your patience if you are here to make a comment via the webinar today. Uh, so our next agenda item is an update on the New England Fishery Management Council's specifications for 2023 to 2025. So Emily is going to provide an update on that process. This is an update only, and I will pass it over to Emily. Thank you, Chair. And we'll get the presentation up here on the screen in just a moment. Perfect. Thank you so much, Madeline. And you can go to the next slide. So at their September meeting, the New England Fishery Management Council voted on a specifications package for 2023 through 2025. And that specifications package was based on the most recent stock assessment, which was just completed this year. Um, and also uh, based on the Council Scientific and Statistical Committee's uh, recommendations consistent with the Atlantic Herring biomass based control rule and also consistent with the Atlantic Herring rebuilding plan in framework adjustment nine. So overall, the 2023 to 2025 annual catch limits remain pretty low in the grand scheme of things, uh, but they are an increase relative to the most recent fishing years. Next slide. Uh, so as far as the timeline, the New England Council voted on the specifications package in September, and they will be submitting this package to NOAA Fisheries for review and approval. And the NOAA Fisheries rule to implement these specifications is expected to be published in January or February. And this Atlantic Hearing Board can consider action to approve these specifications at the upcoming uh, winter meeting in uh, February 2023. Next slide. So these next two slides show the specifications selected by the New England Council for 2023 through 2025 all in metric tons here. Uh, so you can see that the overfishing limit, the acceptable biological catch, and the ACL increase over time through those three years, 2023 to 2025. The border transfer specification is still set at zero metric tons. Um, and as a reminder for the management uncertainty buffer, if the Canadian New Brunswick weir fishery catches less than its associated trigger, then 1,000 metric tons will be subtracted from that uncertainty buffer and added to the area 1A sub ACL. And so this slide now shows the sub ACLs for each management area and also lists what proportion uh, each area receives from the total ACL. Um, again, you can see that slight increase from 2023 through 2025. Um, the fixed gear set aside is still set at 30 metric tons, and the research set aside would be set at 0% as it has uh, for the past two years. Next slide. So this slide shows a comparison of the initial 22, 2022 ACLs from this year as compared to these uh, selected 2023 to 2025 specifications. So you can see the slight increase relative to 2022. For example, this year, the Area 1A sub-ACL was initially just under, just under 1,200 metric tons. Um, and if these specifications are approved, 
next year that area 1A sub ACL would be just under 3,600 metric, metric tons. And so again, for next steps, uh, in January and February, we expect the NOAA Fisheries Rule uh, to be published, implementing these specifications, and this board can consider option to approve those at the winter meeting. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Great, thanks, Emily. And I'll just know, I believe our next assessment for herring would be 2024. So we'll actually potentially be re revisiting the 2025 specifications via that stock assessment. So are there any questions on Emily's presentation? Yes, Justin Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, something that wasn't in the presentation was the river herring and shad bycatch caps. Um, my understanding is those were kept status quo essentially through this specifications package. When this board meets to set specifications, are, are the river herring and shad bycatch caps part of that process or is that something that's strictly council only and we don't have any jurisdiction there? Thanks for the question. So yes, the river herring and shad catch caps were kept the same from past years. Um, I looked at the motion approving the specs from last year and they weren't included in the commission's motion. So I. I don't think that's something the commission typically has to approve, um, but on the, the council side, those were kept the same uh, from previous years. Any other questions from the hearing board? All right, seeing none, we will move on to our next agenda item, which is setting the quota periods for the 2023 Area 1A fishery. So Emily is gonna provide an overview of the quota period system as a bit of a refresher for us. And then this is uh, an action item for the board today, so we will be looking for a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll provide an overview of the uh, Atlantic Caring Quota period system established by Amendment 3. And as uh, Chair stated, the board action for today is to consider setting the quota periods for the 2023 Area 1A fishery. So per Amendment 3, quota periods shall be determined annually for Area 1A. And the board can consider distributing the Area 1A sub ACL using either a bi-monthly, a trimester, or a seasonal quota period to meet the needs of the fishery. The board can also decide whether a quota from January through May will be allocated to later in the fishing season, and the board can specify if underages may be rolled from one period to the next within the same year. So here on the screen, this is from the amendment, are the different quota period options from Amendment 3. Um, so all of these allocation percentages and options are fixed options, and these options can only be changed through an addendum. So up top are the bi-monthly quota period options. So in, in this case, quota will be allocated in two-month periods throughout the year with options for no landings prior to June 1st. The next option on the bottom left is the trimester quota period option. So there's three quota periods throughout the whole year. And then finally, on the bottom right, you have the seasonal quota options uh, with one option for landings prior to June 1st and one for no landings uh, before June 1st. So for reference, here are the quota periods approved by the board in recent years. In 2019, the board allocated the Area 1A sub ACL using the bi-monthly quota period option with no landings prior to June 1st. And then for the most recent three years, 2020, 21, and 22, the board has allocated the Area 1A sub ACL using the seasonal quota period option with no landings prior to June 1st. So about 73% has been allocated for June through September in recent years and about 27% uh, to October through December. And then in all three years, uh, the board has allowed underages from one quota period to be rolled into the next quota period. So again, just to wrap up, the board's action for today is to consider setting these quota periods for Area 1A for 2023. Um, and again, as a reminder, the New England Council's proposed Area 1A sub ACL is just under 3,600 metric tons. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Great, any questions for Emily before we look for a motion? All right, seeing none, we are looking for a motion today and we'll see if we have any either in person or from webinar participants. Uh, I see a hand from Melanie Griffin on the webinar. Great, thank you, Melanie. I believe Melanie had sent in a motion via email and since we're having some audio difficulties, maybe I will pinch it for her and read the motion and uh, we'll see if we get a second. 
All right, so the motion by Ms. Griffin is moved to allocate the 2023 Area 1A sub ACL seasonally with 72.8% available from June through September and 27.2% allocated from October through December. The fishery will close when 92% of the seasonal period's quota has been projected to be harvested and underages from June through September shall be rolled into, into the October through December period. Motion by Ms. Griffin, do we have a second? Ray Kane, thank you. All right, Ray, you're actually from the same state as Melanie, so we're going to keep a different second. Eric Reed, thank you. All right, is there any discussion on the motion today? Yes, Dennis Abbott. Yes, thank you. I'm not particularly opposed to this motion, but one thing that I've noticed with the low quotas is the fact that every year it seems as though we're getting a thousand tons returned from Canada, which ends up in in the October to December period, which really causes a shift in those percentages, so to speak, where if you look at, especially this year with the low numbers that the October through December catch is greater than in the summer. So I don't know if that's a good for the summer bait fish or whether it's bad. I know we've been depending on Menhaden, but uh, I just think that we end up with somewhere, you know, maybe 40, 45 percent of the catch actually being caught in the final period. And I don't know what the affected states, how they feel about that or whether they think we should be looking at that 72, 28 percent looking for comments. All right. Any reaction to Dennis's comment? I will just remind this board. We actually had a draft addendum three um, that was looking at different changes. Uh, I think some of them were the percentages, others were trip or uh, days out measures in that fall winter period that we've kind of postponed indefinitely, I believe at this point. So uh, we did start to have that discussion, but I don't think we have finished that. But any other comments in reaction to Dennis? Steve Train. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have similar comments to Dennis, not the exact same thing, but I, unless I'm not seeing this fishery for what I think it is. It's the same boats pretty much regardless of the season. It's just when they're allowed to go. They seem to come in, tie up, and then go back out when it opens up. Maybe there's a little bit of geographic difference. So knowing that we generally get this rolled in, added on, why do we need to close at 92% for summer knowing we have a tremendous amount of quota left if there is, you know, we could go 96, 97, 98% uh, it's the same boats. It's just when they catch it, as long as we don't go over the total by the end. All right. Thanks, Steve. I'll just point out, I think the difference between the summer and the winter seasons is the gear types that are permitted. So it's persanes in the summer and then persanes and midwater trawls in the winter. I think I saw a hand. Yeah, ring. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. We're never really sure of the thousand metric ton that gets transferred from Canada. And, you know, Recently, history has shown us, yeah, we get it every year, but and that's also a council FMP plan. And I don't know what jurisdiction we would have in changing percentages, uh, but we never know if we're going to get the 1,000 metric ton from Canada. So you want to give the fishermen access. So I don't know how you go about changing percentages right now. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Any other comments on this topic? All right, I will just point out we did have that draft addendum three. So if board members are interested, that's something that they can go back to to refresh themselves on some of the conversations we've had and we can go from there at a later date. Tony? Yeah. The board probably doesn't have access to that addendum at this point, so it's hard for them to do so. If But it is the will of the board that you want to change these percentages in some way that is different than the options that you have through the FMP, then we would need to direct staff and the PDT to, to do so, to bring something back to you that's different, but we would want to know what it is that you want them to explore. And I can send around via email after the meeting that previous draft addendum three, if uh, folks want to take a look at that and we can perhaps discuss it at the next board meeting. All right, so I think that sounds like a good plan moving forward. We do have a motion on the board. Um, so we have a motion by Ms. Griffin, a second by Mr. Reed. Oops. <laughs> uh, is there any opposition to this motion? No hands on the webinar. Okay. Seeing none, this motion, this motion is approved by unanimous consent.
All right, we're going to move on to our next uh, agenda item today, which is considering the vacant ASMFC seat on the New England uh, Fishery Management Council's Atlantic Herring Committee. So just as a bit of a introduction on this, uh, we, the commission, received a seat on the New England Council's Atlantic Herring Committee in 2018. And this seat is now vacant with the retirement of Richie White. So we need to select a new ASMFC representative to fill that seat on today's hearing committee. So I will be looking for uh, a motion to uh, nominate someone. And Dennis, I see your hand. Thank you. It's my pleasure to nominate the gentleman from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, my good friend, Mr. Raymond Kane, to be the representative to the New England Council. All right, thank you, Dennis. We'll wait for that motion to be put on the board. And then we will look for a second. All right, so we have a motion on the board. We're looking for a second. And I'm hearing, Melanie, you have your hand raised on the webinar. So it will be a second by Ms. Griffin. Great. Is there any discussion on the motion today? Yes, Dennis. In addition to, you know, planning on having Ray Kane, it crosses my mind that sending someone, uh, it's an LGA, it's not going to be a state director to take this position. It ends up being something that's outside of our normal duties as commissioners. And I feel that the person that goes there should be remunerated in some way with a stipend for every meeting he goes to. I don't think that the person that we send to the council meeting should go there, you know, as a true, let's say as a volunteer, but I do think that we should consider some reimbursement for that individual. I think that would only be fair. So I bring it up at this point, maybe I'll have to bring it up at another, but I do think that whomsoever it is deserves to be reimbursed. As you know, there's been more, more and more discussions amongst our LGAs about, you know, volunteering our time and basically without compensation. And I think that, it, especially in this case, where it's beyond the normal duties of being a commissioner going to, you know, council meetings, that it would only be be fair in my opinion. That, that's my opinion. All right. Thank you, Dennis. I will pass it over to Bob to see if he has any comments on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, Dennis, thanks for the comments. And, you know, you used two different words in there. One, you said a stipend, and the other, you said reimbursement. So I'm not sure if you're talking about reimbursing travel. Yeah. And so, so it sounds like you're actually looking for a stipend above and beyond reimbursement for travel and meals. Is that correct? Okay, so that's what you're looking for. So, you're right, the commission hasn't done that for any of the positions um, that attend council meetings or attend these meetings or anything else. So I think that would be Obviously, executive committee and policy board would need to take that up and, and look at the budget and see what's available. And it would be a, a pretty significant shift to how we do business starting to reimburse those those positions. But, um, you know, it can be talked about at the executive committee if, if someone want to bring it up. Great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, so I'll go back to the motion on the floor. Is there any other discussion on this motion? All right. Uh, is there any opposition to the motion? I see no opposition, so the motion passes. And Ray, maybe I'll just have you take a moment now to put on the record, you are a member of the advisory panel, and so you will uh, be changing your positions at the council. Thank you, Megan. Uh, yeah, if elected by this commission to the uh, land sea hiring position on the New England Council, uh, speaking on behalf of the commission at the council meetings, the hiring meetings, the land sea hiring committee meetings, I will resign my seat on the Atlantic Sea Hiring AP of the New England Fishery Management Council. Great, thank you, Ray. All right, so I think that concludes that agenda item. Uh, we are moving on to other business. So I'll turn it, uh, make, uh, turn it over to Tony, maybe, or it's good. You know, I'll turn it over to Emily to uh, just provide an update on the funding for um, the port site sampling program. Thanks, Chair. So at the last meeting, we had a discussion about um, the funding for the Atlantic Herring port site sampling um, ending in at the end of 2023, previously supported by ACCSP funds. Um, so I've talked with Executive Director uh, Bob Beale, and likely that ASMFC can um, provide some funding for the following year, 2024, so just a very short-term solution. So we'd still be looking to the states for some long-term guidance on the herring port side sampling. Okay, great. So it looks like we have a few more years of coverage, still a discussion topic we will need to have in the future, but 
uh, I think it's good that we have a little bit of buffer, it looks like. All right, so is there any other, other business today? Seeing none, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Sheree Patterson and a second from Ray Kane. Thank you all.